Xavier Porter, Shoot the Fire, Brooklyn Fights Live Direct. We in the building with the one and only. Bobby. This young man is gifted. He's special. He's talented. He got the. He got the. He got everybody buzzing out here in the NYC. Basically, the United States, the number one lightweight amateur fighter, Bobby Pettigrew, out of Brooklyn, New York. What's going on, man? How you feeling today? I'm good. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you to have you. Thank, thank, you know, appreciate you coming on and everything. Um, tell me, tell, you know, tell us about yourself real quick. Um, my name is Bobby Pettigrew Jr. I'm 15 years old. I turned 16 December 30th. And, and if you can, try to talk into the mic so they can hear you. My name is Bobby Pettigrew. I'm currently 15 years old, fighting 17-18 in USA Boxing um, National Championship. We had a tournament coming up this year, but it got canceled due to COVID. So right now, I'm just staying ready, staying um, training. I'm a five-time national champion out of Brooklyn, New York, and I trained Rockaway Ropes with Coach Ken Kenyatta Harris and Coach Anthony Santiago. And yeah, just training, staying determined. Like you just mentioned, you're 15 years old, ranked number one in the nation. Training out of Rockaway Ropes with Coach K. Kenyatta. That's my guy. Shout him out real quick. And you're from Brooklyn, Brownsville, to be exact, correct? Brownsville. Brownsville, Brooklyn. Woo, boy. Yeah. It's about to come from that hood, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Takes a lot to come from Brownsville. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get right into it. Like, how were you able to maintain, you know, balance and staying out of trouble with everything that's going on in our, our communities? Because as you know, our inner city is tough, is rough. So how were you able to find balance and maintain and keep yourself out of trouble? Well, growing up in Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York, you know, it's tough around here. The streets, the streets don't love nobody, but um thanks to my dad, he's been here through the whole step of the way. He had great guidance. You know, he tried to keep me on track and keep me out of trouble. And I go to the gym every day and I just stay focused. I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, having a strong father in your life is a great thing for young men, as well as young women, but definitely for young men. Because they do say a lot of fathers are not present in the household and not take care of their kids. So I want you know, to applaud him for that. Um, and the fact that you just mentioned something that a lot of people don't understand, the streets don't love nobody. The streets don't love nobody. Don't love, love nobody. So I commend you on understanding that also. When did, you, when did you start boxing? I started boxing when I was seven years old. And it's kind of a funny story why I started boxing, but- Let's hear it, let's hear it. <laughs> one day uh, around on my block, like by my house, it was this big kid. I mean, he was, he was kind of like the bully. He was chasing me, my dad saw it. Next day, I went to the gym. My dad wasn't having it, yeah. <laughs> having it, and I fell in love with boxing since then. Yeah. What was the what was that first gym you went to? Um, Judah Brothers. Um, boxing. Oh, yeah. was that but his father? Okay, okay, All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. And he realized right there. He was like, ah, oh, this is this is me right here. I like this right here. Yeah, I like. It. <laughs> like I was a natural. I came in the gym. I knew my stance. You know, yeah. I, work, I caught on quick. I'm like a sponge. I learn learn very quickly. So. Yeah, I just fell in love with the sport right there. Okay, okay. You have a birthday coming up, correct? Yeah, December 30th. Okay, okay. Happy, happy, happy early birthday. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. You know. So I got some questions here that I wanted to go through with you. Um, to kind of chop it up with you about. So like you mentioned, your um number one ranked lightweight. We just discussed, you know, representing Brownsville. How important it is it to you to represent Brownsville, Brooklyn? Very important because around here it's not really a lot of Young people doing good right now. So being a role model as well as Bruce Carrington, you know, he's another role model in Brownsville. So we're we're young and we're doing we're doing great things. We're more role model to the younger generation. Yeah. You mentioned Bruce Shushu Carrington, who's also on the Olympic team right now, who's going for gold in twenty twenty Olympics. Hopefully, with COVID and everything. Yeah. How, how is your relationship? We got a good relationship. I knew him um, before I started boxing. I used to go to his fights, stuff like that. And really, my dad, like he, my dad and his dad is close, so kind of got into boxing with him too. Because like he, he like him, him and his dad, they give my dad a lot of knowledge about boxing before I started boxing. So really, we knew the game before we got in. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here. I also know that you you have a really good rapport, a really good relationship with uh, Mr. Dante Lane, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's like my brother right there. Yeah. He's out of Elmont, New York? He's out of Elmont, New York, but he also trains with me in Rockaway Ropes. Both of y'all oh, are teammates in the sense. Both of teammates, and both on the USA team. Nice. 
Nice. That's a good look right there to have somebody you cool with to come up and ranks with. What are some of the things that you've learned from, you know, being on a, the Olympic boxing team? Being on a USA team, it was very competitive. Like, I was, in, I was up in camp with all the other number one kids, and we just kept each other at a high standard. No one was slacking. We were all pushing each other. You know, being, very, being in a competitive environment, like, you just want to come out on top. And me, as a competitive person myself, I never wanted to be behind. I always to be on top. You know, as they were my teammates, but I still, I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to be at the top. When you when you're fighting or you're competing against these other guys, are you competing between certain age groups, or are you going against the guys like the Keyshawn Davises of the world and things of that nature? No, I'm I'm competing against other dudes. Well, Keyshawn Davis and them, they're they're elite. I'm junior. They're, That's what I mean. Like this, this the classes, like yeah. Age, 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 and weight groups. Yeah. Are you I'm fighting fighting a yeah, I'm sorry. I fight, I'm 15. I'm turning 16, so I'm going to be fighting in 17, 18. Gotcha. How do you find a competition level between all the other states and, you know, people you face from outside of coming from New York? Because they always say New York got this thing about us. Yeah, yeah. New York, New York has a good <laughs> boxing style, different from the other states. You know, California, Texas, Ohio, they got good competition. They fight at a, at a high level. But New York, we just got a different type of boxing style. We all... Like we don't go out there and just just fight. We smart. We fight smart. We box. You know, we mm -hmm. on top just like that. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Got some more questions for you. What are some of your influences? You know, to make you you know do what you do. Well, the people around me, um, my society, the environment that I'm growing up in, they influence me to not be like that. To be better. You know. And also being in an environment to train with Shushu and Dante Lane, they also push they influence me to do better, push myself to be great. Mm -hmm. you know, train at a what about, level. What about motivation? What drives you? The internal. Goal. I like winning. <laughs> winning drives me for a fact. Yeah, I like to win. Okay. Um, you know, when you when you're out in the community. And you know you're out and around surroundings and everything. Mentally, how do you how do you stay focused? I stay focused. You know, music plays a big key too. I put on music. I stay focused. Most times when I'm outside, I'm I'm on my way to the gym. So that's yeah. Yeah, I I, I really don't focus on anything outside the gym. I'm boxing. You know, like when you're traveling, like how do you keep your mind focused? Like I'm going point A, point B, not trying to get sidetracked with having a conversation over here or having a conversation over here, like. You know. Well, I keep myself busy, so when I'm when I'm like walking around in my environment, I, I I say what's up to everybody because I'm cool with everybody. The whole community knows me, but I I just keep pushing. I say what's up, and I keep I keep going where I'm going. You know, I have no time to hang around. Are we gonna see some of your posters soon enough in the stores? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. That's what's up right there. Um. A couple more questions. How did you find your way to Far Rockaway? Or how well, did you find your way to Rockaway Ropes? I was training in um, Packplex with Coach Rob and Dante Lane. He he referred me to um, Rockaway Ropes. You know, he's a great, great coach. I knew them before when I was training in Packplex, stuff like that. I knew them, I knew about them, stuff like that. And then I just finally went. When I went, it was good. What, is, what kind of work do you get there? technical work. Everything is smart. It's um key thing that they say, train harder. I mean, train smarter, not harder. So when training smart, you don't have to do all that extra stuff. Like, like we, we, we mainly focus on training our mind and our body, technical work. We don't try to beat up ourselves. We don't, we don't kill ourselves. We work smart. From being involved in the sport of boxing, have you met certain individuals certain fighters, maybe certain champions who have given you kind of like some keys to, you know, keys to success per se? Uh, I met a couple. Um, let me try to think back. I I haven't met a lot of world champions, but I met like Danny Jacobs. I've, I've had a com conversation with him when I was younger. You know, I, I stay surrounded around amateur world, amateur champions. Yes. Like, like, overseas, stuff like that, like Floyd Diaz. Dante Lane, he's another um, amateur world champion. He went to Serbia, got gold. 
So when I speak to them, we we try to we try to keep each other at a high standard. When we when we do that, we um we give each other pointers, stuff like that. We fight. I, I ask them to critique my sparring, critique my fighting. Yo, what did I do good? What did I do bad? And they, and they tell me they don't try to sugarcoat anything. They tell me straight up, like, yo, you should have moved your head a little bit more. Mm-hmm. That you know, straight punches. You know, I could have. You you should have got him out of there. He shouldn't have been in there the whole three rounds. They tell yeah. me stuff like that. Yeah. With COVID nineteen having taken place last year, how is how has it affected you outside outside of the tournament that you I believe you mentioned earlier that you missed? Can you speak on that? And also, has it affected you in any other areas? Yeah, it has because um, with COVID nineteen, they shut the gyms down in Brooklyn, in New York. So, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, we were one of the last states to open back up gyms. So, yeah. all the other like other states, they were already in the gym working, stuff like that. But we had to work out on our own. We didn't we didn't get gyms back until maybe September October. Other other states they got theirs back like July August. So they were ahead. But how I stayed, how I um kept myself up up to par, I trained on my own outside. I was jogging. I, my dad also bought a bag in here, so I just kept myself in shape, just like that. Mm-hmm. What about school? School. Well, I do online learning, so we couldn't go to school. You know, I, I kind of like online learning better, so because I have more time at home. Yeah, I have more time to do whatever I want. So yeah, I do school online. You know, it's fine like that. Okay, okay. With that being said, we got some more questions to go. So I read up on you. I read some things about you. It says here that uh, the Lakers is your your favorite team. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm over LeBron for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> over LeBron for you. Okay. And uh, pizza is your favorite food. Yeah, pizza and French fries. Okay, pizza for a try. Now, this, this struck me right here. Your favorite movie is The Lion King? Yeah. <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> you got you to explain to me that. You got to explain to me that. I don't know. I just, I, I fell in love with that movie when I was younger. Like, I, would, I used to watch that movie every day. Okay. Sometimes I put it on here and there, but every time I watch it, it's like I never watched it before. It's like, yeah. Same thing. I, every time I watch it, it's my favorite movie. I say that. Yeah. I gotta ask you. I gotta. Ask, do you get emotional when you watch the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't even lie. When Mufasa died, it hit, it hit me. <laughs> it hit me different. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. That's cool, man. Grown men, you know, we we are, you know, we we got feelings. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> That relationship he had with his father, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. And um, your favorite artist is Nas? Yeah, my favorite artist is Nas. Now I got to ask you this question, too. Mm-hmm. You're 15 years old. What you think about Nas? <laughs> my, dad, my dad put me up in the when I was younger. We've been listening to him forever. Yeah. You know, most 15 year olds, I, I, I'm glad that your father has done that with you because, you know, most 15 year olds, they. Are listening to the music that's out now that I can't understand and can't get with, and I'm, I'm probably don't understand and get with it either. You know, you you, you say you listen, you your favorite artist is Nas. That's our era, so that's what's up. That's a great look right there. Yeah. Um, and your favorite, let's see here, your favorite, um, your favorite boxer, Floyd well, Mayweather, Canelo. You know, all of the yeah. I studied okay. it. Okay. What are your thoughts with Floyd and uh the Logan Paul situation? It's a, joke. it's a joke. I feel like I feel like they're mocking boxing. They they they're they're bringing the boxing they're bringing boxing to a whole nother level, and it's bad because mm. boxing not gonna be respected ever. Like how, how boxing was respected back then, Mike Tyson era stuff like that. Everybody looked up to boxers. I feel like that with this right now, YouTubers fighting boxers stuff like that. I mean. No, no YouTuber for the boxer, but um, Floyd and Logan Paul, I feel like they're mocking boxing. They're, they're going to take boxing as a joke now. Okay. Well, that's that's, that's your opinion. Fair. You have all right to feel that way. Now, some of these championships you won, can you, can you share, like, the experiences you had in these tournaments? Like I Definitely. said, from the um, you were two, two, 2019, Junior Open, the 2019 Eastern Open, you placed first with both of those. Uh, 
2019 Western Regional, you placed third. 2018 National Junior Olympics, you placed first. Can you share some of your experiences in, 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 in these tournaments that you were very, very successful at? Yeah, definitely. Um, thinking back to the 2018 Junior um, Junior Olympics, that tournament was big for me. Um, leading up to that tournament, I got sick, you know, and I was training. I was training alongside um, cash flow, um, training up to that tournament in Packplex. And going to that tournament, it was a lot of dudes there. Um, it was a lot of competition, a lot of competition. In the finals, I fought um, Khalid Harrison. He he won Junior Olympics like two two years in a row, so that was a big fight for me. And when I pulled that one off in the finals, I won um, the most outstanding boxer of the tournament. So yeah, that was that was a big tournament that I won. And then um, the 2019, I'm trying to think back, 2019 Eastern Qualifiers, that tournament was big as well because, you know, it was the Olympic year, um, the Olympic trials year. So everybody wanted to win that and stuff like that. And that, that tournament was very competitive. I fought um, Devon Lucas in the finals. I'm not sure if you know who that is. But I fought De Devon Lucas in the finals. Um, and I pulled that off. Then got to the 2019 USA Boxing National Championship to go on the team on Team USA. I won that against Jesse Alvarez. The, the environment was great, you know, being around other national champion, other national champions, you know, it's, it's just a great environment. I can't really explain it. It's better sweet. We totally understand. Is it for you as a young man, 15 years old, coming out of Brooklyn, coming out of Brownsville? Is it more important to you to represent? who you are in your family, or is it more important to you to represent your community? Both. I can't pick one. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a reflection of my community and my family. I, I come from this household, so Thanks. I'm, I'm, a, I'm like, I'm, my behavior reflects my parents, how my parents raised me, so. Come more to the mic. Talk more to huh? the mic. Can you talk um, more to the mic? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a reflection of my parents, you know, my family. They they raised me right, so I'm a reflection of them. You know, when you see me and I'm and I'm doing good, my behavior and my manners are well. I'm a reflection of my parents. I just show you how, how my parents and my family are. And then my community, seeing like a kid like me coming out of my community doing good, you know, it just brings a better reflection of the community. You know, we got someone everybody has someone to look up to. Yeah. This is always the it's always the talk of Brownsville. Yeah, exactly. You hear Brownsville, you don't hear you don't hear things good about Brownsville. So when mm -hmm. you know, those kids doing good, you know, you hear a lot about them. Last but not least, if people didn't know who Mr. Bobby Pettigrew is, yeah. is it fair to say Junior, or is it just <laughs> yeah, yeah. If people didn't know who Mr. Bobby Pettigrew Pettigrew is, Bobby Pettigrew Junior is, how how would you describe him? Thoughtful, athletic, you know, determined. Determined, definitely. I'm definitely determined. Determined, you said? Yeah, determined. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Any last words for people, you know, out there get to know you? Because you, you're going to get a lot more interviews coming, man. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Well, you, the more success you, you know, you, you put out there, it's going to be a lot of people got their mics open, say, hey, I want to ask you a couple of questions. So, you know. You got any last words for right now? Yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram at good.moneybj. Thank you. I want to give a shout out to everybody. Give a shout out to you for interviewing me on today. Thank you. Appreciate it. My family, my coaches, teammates, thank you for supporting me. You know, it's only up from here. All right. All right. Then have it. Xavier Porter, shoot the fire, Brooklyn fights to the building. I want to appreciate Mr. Bobby Pettigrew Jr. for stepping in. We're going to see you soon, man. Keep, keep keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Peace. Peace.